This is a KNVT Sports presentation. And a pleasant good afternoon from a very windy Los Altos field on the campus of Los Altos High School. KMVT Sports proudly brings to you Santa Clara Valley Athletic League, De Anza Division Soccer. And it is a blustery day here as we are underway. The Los Altos Eagles in white hosting the Gun Titans and they are wearing black. My name is Lazarus Sarginides. Glad you can join us here on KNVT. A possible playoff spot is up for grabs. A big important game for both teams as this is the last regular season game of the year for both teams. Los South is coming in with an overall record of seven wins, seven losses and three ties as you can hear the wind howling through the field. And it's almost going to feel like we're in a wind tunnel, so bear with us, folks, throughout the duration of this game. But the wind's going to be with us for a while. No clouds in the sky, though, but a, the wind definitely might play a factor in this game. Mentioned how Los Altos is coming in with a record of seven wins, seven losses, and three ties. They are currently 4-7-2 and two in league. And the Gun Titans coming in with a 6-7-4 record overall. And they have a league record of 4... I believe it's 4-5-3. I got to double check that. Actually, yes. Actually, 4-5-4 four, four in the De Anza division. Standing in 5th place, Los Altos, right behind him in 6th. Get a chance to run down the starting lineups for you in a moment. Los Altos is under first, uh, I mean second year coach Jack Rosenhan. Doing a fine job with a young team here at Los Altos. And Gunn is under the first year tutelage of Owen Flannery. And Owen is assisted by Rox, uh, Rhonda Coxie. So Los Altos in white. Getting a free kick by starting goalie. And this is... Lindsay Fish as Los Altos now on the attack into Gun territory. Deepest penetration so far of the game as Gun so far has controlled the game as there is first year coach Owen Flannery getting a drink of water there as the wind whoa, almost blew my hat off. Wow, well, Owen doing a smart thing and not wearing a hat. And you saw there covering her eyes, looking on, rocks around the oxy. And there is Jack Rosenhan, Los Altos head coach. Boy, he's wearing shorts. Uh, nothing bothers this guy. Actually, the, you know, we had beautiful weather this past weekend. And, well, the weather, weather-wise, it's okay. Sunny skies, but the wind, the wind is just brutal. as it seemed to have died down partly. Also, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties as don't adjust your screen, but the color of the grass might seem a little bit yellow. Actually, we've had some te technical difficulties we'll try to fix as the broadcast is going on. So 
No need to adjust your set color-wise, but at least you know Los Altos is in white. Gun is in black. Los Altos, a very young team, as they only have two seniors on this year's team. And, that, and they are Rebecca Burnham and Lucy Daggett. So a young team making its mark here in the De Anza division. As Los Altos have come up with some big games. And speaking of big games, Gun, they have really come on of late. Recently, a huge upset against the defending De Anza division champion, St. Francis Lancers, as they pulled off a two to one upset. And speaking with Owen Flannery, for the ball game, he is very, very proud of his team, and the girls are on a roll. A huge win over St. Francis, and a big tie over Homestead has put them in position for the playoffs. As there's a crossing shot, but an easy catch by Lindsey Fish and. Let's see if we can run down the starting lineup. We mentioned that Lindsay is in goal for the Eagles. We have Rebecca Burnham, number nine. Number 19, Bonnie Chen. Number two, Lucy Daggett. Number eight, Min Dang. Number three, Joan Danver. Number five, Lindsay Fish, we mentioned in goal. Number seven, Annie Fish. Number 13, Jeanette Heyman. Number 20, Katie Jones. Number 16, Jessica Wayland. And number 14, Stephanie Young. Also need to mention Los Altos, they, they are a player short as sophomore midfielder Laura Perry is injured. And here is a header going nowhere. Los Altos battling for the ball. It looks like the wind is playing havoc with any balls that are kicked deep as we are on the opposite end of the benches and the wind is blowing right into our faces. So you can see the crowd gathering here on the far side of the field. And well, people are bundling up. I see some people with blankets over near the truck. Battle in the middle now. This is Heyman. Ball rolling and will be kicked. And this will stay in. And Fish will let it roll out and this will be a throw in. Let's quickly run down the gun lineup for you. As given to me by Owen Flannery as there's another battle for the ball in the far left corner. Heyman shot blocked and kicked free by Gunn. Two 40 minute halves and we are currently in the ninth minute of play as a race for the ball, double teamed was number 12 Janet Lawrence their senior star as Janet Los Altos has to be very careful Janet has good moves very fast as you can see Los Altos doing a smart job of double teaming her not letting her go one on one header in the middle and this will bounce out and will be a free kick in goal for the Titans it will be senior goalie Laura Boyd and on the field will be number 24 Vicky Chi, number 6 Samantha Feinberg, number 10 Magda Kuzinski, number 13 Jenna Hillary, 
number 12, we mentioned Janet Lawrence, person to watch out for. Number 19, Marcy Lassard. Also number 14, Kira Price. Number 2, Monica Quinenez. Number 15, Lily Robinton. And number 16, Emily Schumann. We are on the 10th minute of play here in the first half. Scoreless game, big game for both teams as we mentioned. Later on, we'll get a chance to look at the De Anza Division standings. As a couple of big games this afternoon, we'll decide who will go into the playoffs. As Los Altos, are they on side? Yes, there's no whistle. There's a shot in the middle blocked by a gun defender and cleared away. Another shot in the middle, but an easy catch there by Laura Boyd. I believe that was Lily Robinson in the middle that blocked that crossing pass. Los Saltos, so far with the best opportunity of scoring early here in the game. Mentioned a young team. Started the season 2-0-2 and have come upon some rough times. But a young team still learning, growing together. <laughs> Mentioned how Los Altos has an injured player, which was Laura Perry. Mentioned she's heard she has a shoulder problem dislocated shoulder. Gunn, on the other hand, have three big players that have been hurt. And early on in the season, both of their co-captains, no less, Jenna Smith and Bev Thurston Ballard, both injured early in the year, both with ACL knee injuries, out for the year. And what a tough way for Gunn to start the season off with two players going down. And not only that, but senior leadership. But they have rebounded well towards the tail end of this regular season. And Owen Flannery telling me that the girls are very pumped up. Full of confidence. Especially that win over St. Francis really have given them a boost in the arm and they think they can make the playoffs but a win definitely is imperative for both teams I don't think both teams can afford a tie as the wind once again howling through my headset unfortunately especially for us there's no uh, press box here on the field that we can shade ourselves and clear ourselves from the wind but Gunn with some penetration now. Pass in the middle. And this will be free nicely. Paul Saltos. Also, Mitra Malik, a junior, is also hurt for Gunn. So Gunn, they're down three players. But it brought a lot of people, though, with them. you're including Malik that was on the roster and the other two injured players 26 names on the roster so 23 active players so Gunn definitely can get themselves a lot of fresh legs and if it's a close game towards the end this also being the last game of the regular season is also senior day here for the Eagles as Berman and Daggett playing their last home games here on Eagle Field here at Los Altos. Tri-captains for today's game mentioned the two seniors Berman and Daggett and also Min Dang number eight. So tri-captains for the Eagles this afternoon. And later on, we 
will show you an interesting way how the Eagles, as they were warming up, had their captains stand out during warm-ups. Girls having a sense of humor, but I'm going to have to keep you in suspense until the second half. But for now, scoreless game, 15th minute of play. Ball gets away, and this will be a throw-in for the Titans. Battle in the corner. This is Lawrence, and the ball just through the mouth of the goal. Beyond the reach there of Monica Quinenez. Quinenez, a freshman, as Lawrence. Nice placement. Probably the wind held that one up as she kicked that ball into the wind. Mentioning how Gunn has played tough against St. Francis, Los Altos. Last time we saw them was early in the season. They had a tough 2-0 loss. I believe it was a 2-0 loss to the Lancers. Hosted the Lancers back in mid-January, mid around the 17th, I believe. And the Eagles only lost 1-0. So Los Altos also playing with some confidence. The surprise team, of course, in the Deanza division have been the Palo Alto Vikings. Coming in 13-0, undefeated and untied in the Deanza division. Only one team ever has ever finished the Deanza division undefeated and untied. And that was St. Francis. out of the reach of Bonnie Chen and a throw in for the Titans and Palo Alto playing their last game of the regular season oddly enough hosting the Lancers as we speak as our game is going on the Lancers and the Vikings playing at Palo Alto High School so a win or a tie for the Lancers will preserve that distinction for them. Though Palo Alto has already clinched the De Anza Division Championship. St. Francis is currently sitting in second place, just above Homestead. Top three teams in the De Anza Division automatically reach the playoffs. And Homestead, St. Francis, and Palo Alto already clinching those three spots. But at, at large birds could be up for grabs. That's why this game looms large. Gunn can finish with the league record at exactly 500 if they can pull off a win. Pass in the middle here. Here's Lawrence. Goalie out of the box. Open net and a goal. 18th minute of play. Janet Lawrence gives the Titans the 1-0 lead as Fish came out of the box. An aggressive move on her part. But Lawrence beat her to the ball as here it is on replay. Pass right in the middle. Fish tried the sliding tackle, but Lawrence kept her composure and an easy goal. And the assist. Well, we'll find that later as we'll check and see who got the assist on that. But the goal by Janet Lawrence. And Gunn, with the momentum now, one to nothing. And the assist 
will go to number 16, Emily Schumann, the senior. Actually, we've seen that play quite a bit. That type of goal this year as back in December, the Mountain View Spartans hosted Sequoia. Game scene here on KNVT. Spartans ended up with a 1-1 tie, but the goal that was given up was on a similar play where a goalie came out of the box aggressively to try to stop a fast break. Overplayed the ball, left the net wide open. And that ended up being the difference between a win and a tie. And last month, we saw a game between, oddly enough, involving another Mountain View team, but this time the boys against the Fremont Firebirds. Fremont up one to nothing in that game. Mountain View with the chance to tie it as the goalie overplayed the ball again, but unfortunately for the Spartans, can't remember who the player was, but he missed the open goal. If he took his time, had the goal all to himself. Another crossing pass, but this will go over the net, and this will be a free kick for the Titans. And again, we saw an over-aggressive play. You can't really blame Lindsey Fish. Still a little bit inexperienced, only a sophomore. Having a good year. But totally missed on the slide tackle. Which left the goal, left the net open there for Janet Lawrence. Here's another possible fast break here. And this one is an easy catch for Fish. Shot taken by Marcia Lassard. So the goal at the 18th minute of play. And the Titans with momentum on their side and the 1 0 lead. Alsatos with a couple of good chances earlier in the half. But you got to think the Eagles will have to bounce back quick. Can't afford to let Gunn go up 2 0. Twenty-third minute of play here. Equals the Eagles looking for the equalizer as nice pass by Dang and stolen away, re-stolen away by the Eagles. The Eagles are doing a nice job with their passing. Good footwork this game. There's Heyman, left foot is shot off the post. It's off the post, and oh, the Eagles almost tied the game there. Oh my! Heyman, a sophomore, almost tied this game. We'll get a chance to look at this on replay. Mentioned the Eagles doing a nice job passing the ball around. Boy, the goalie. Check out this shot. Kind of nonchalantly went over to play the ball thinking he was going to go possibly thinking he was going to go wider than she anticipated and it hit the post well, you got to figure Los Altos eventually they're going to be zeroing in on that goal on the net so the Titans already with two Reprievals as Los Altos 
coming very close. But what counts is on the scoreboard. Gun up one to nothing. Wind starts to pick up once again. As we have another race for the ball. And this one thought was going to be cleared out of bounds, but kept in. Back and forth here. Nice deep pass. Eagles are on side. Let's see if they'll get a crossing pass over and over. Kicking the ball is Rebecca Burnham. Oh, and she knew it right off the bat. She had a player streaking down the middle. She thought if she can just bump it up a bit, get a better feel for the ball, but. A little bit out of her reach. And on we go. 26th minute of play. It really wasn't too long ago, Gunn. They were in the Division I Championship. Last year, of course, St. Francis defeated Live Oak two to nothing. And back it was 1999. The Lancers and Gunn battled for the Division I title and Gunn was on the short end of a three nothing loss. And Lawrence was only a sophomore back then. So you knew that Gunn had the talent. Gunn probably might have done a little bit better in the standings if they had Jenna Smith and Beverly Thurston Bauer. You got to think that. But nonetheless, the girls that have stepped in for him have done the job. Owen Flannery really believes that his team can reach the playoffs with a win, and so far, Gunn is on their way. Shadow's starting to creep over now. As we have trees behind us here, as this field is nestled in between the tennis courts and the gymnasium. And later on this evening, the boys basketball team will take on Monta Vista. As there's their pass and freed away by Boyd. Boyd, a tall, lanky player. Some good reach, so Los Saltos, with any ideas of trying to go high on her, she's pretty tall, about six feet. So, tough time to get the ball over. There's a whiff on the ball, but pass right there, and a nice low catch by Boyd. Shot taken by Bonnie Chen, and Boyd frees it away. 29th minute of play. Gun scoring at the 18 minute mark, 18th minute of play. Crossing pass from Emily Schumann to Janet Lawrence. It's giving Gunn the 1 0 lead. Ball goes back into the goal end, which is straddling the line, the goal box. Eventually gets freed away, but this is Heyman. Gets control of the ball, right footed shot, but right to Boyd. Well, the Eagles are getting all their shots on goal, which is a positive thing. They're not going wide. Only one shot has gone over the net. 
And one shot has also hit the post. I think we got a substitution now, but from the far end of the field, I really can't tell who's coming in. Might be able, might be able to get a number later. Eagles changing up on their defense now. Stephanie Young to throw in. And this is number 11. Ashley Trant, the so uh, freshman, coming in for Los Altos. Seven freshmen on the roster for the Eagles. You got to figure in a year or two, this team is really going to be a force in the De Anza division. But the De Anza division might have themselves another look. As another pass, cross in the middle, kick free by Robinson. Well, Los Altos again attacking the ball, not wasting any time. You gotta love that. Heyman, another shot, but this one goes wide. Another free kick for Gunn. And we mentioned how the Tienza division might have themselves a different look. In two years, the Central Coast section is going to create a new league, the West Catholic Athletic League. And for those of you thinking, well, there is already a West Catholic Athletic League for the boys. But this is going to be for the girls. As St. Francis will be plucked out of the Santa Clara Valley Athletic League and put into a new league. Other teams joining the league will be Archbishop Mitty, Presentation, Valley Christian, Sacred Heart Prep, Sacred Heart Cathedral, St. Ignatius, and Notre Dame Belmont. So this new league will be in effect for all girls sports but this is planned for the 2002-2003 year and almost another goal Heyman boy if she doesn't get a goal today I will be very surprised we'll get another chance to look at that on replay but this is like the second time she this could have been her second goal of the game look at this shot Heyman right on the money but right over the crossbar but we also mentioned how Boyd is very tall so she probably would have knocked that down but Heyman only a sophomore so she might be a force to be reckoned with in a year or two 33rd minute of play as Los Altos still looking for the equalizer. Another throw in by the Eagles. Battle for the ball. Dang. Ball rolls out of bounds. Get a chance here to look at the De Anza Division standings as Paul Walto sits on top with a 13-0 record. They're hosting the second place Lancers. Homestead, you see there at third, clinching the third automatic spot for the playoff. Then you got Monta Vista Gun, Los Altos, Saratoga, and Los Gatos. And Los Altos again with another good chance of possibly scoring, but that goes, chance goes awry, but they're going to get a corner kick. 34th minute of play going on to the 35th minute, and this is the first corner kick by either team. So good job on defense. A high kick, a little short, head freed away, another pooch kick 
by Joan Danver. And this will be a free kick for Gunn. Well, on that win against St. Francis, Gunn, they did give up a goal. They did win two to, two to one, but that goal came on a penalty kick. So they held the Lancers at bay. But Los Altos with some good chances here. There's a little push, no whistle. Double teamed was any fish. Ball right through the mouth of the goal, beyond Trant. And again, the Eagles with the possibility of scoring, Min Dang. Well, I am, I'm going to make a prediction here. Dang and Heyman have been doing a fine job of getting the ball close to the net. And I got to believe one of these two is going to score today. With so many chances, they're bound to put one in. So Gunn's going to really, really play tough on defense. They can't hold back on a one-goal lead, especially scoring it early in the game. With a two to nothing lead, it's going to be tough for Los Altos to score two. And there's another whiff on defense, and the ball going backwards and kick free. As Lily Robinson whiffed on the free kick there, tried to kick it away, and the ball went behind her. And a corner kick, number two for the Eagles. And Fish will take this. See if she can get it up high and deep. Low liner headed off the side of the head of Heyman. Kind of skipped off of her. It's a low liner. Fish again with a little kick there. There's Dang in the middle. And Gunn kicks it free and down the field. We said it. Gunn has to play tight defense. Los Altos, so far, making, well, not making the most of their opportunities. But you got to figure if they keep it up, they just might. My nothing gun, we are in the 37th minute of play. Another deep ball, and the other fish, Lindsay Fish, will take this. Boy, I don't think I've ever seen a soccer game go this deep into the first half without seeing a few, a bit few more corner kicks. All South is receiving two, but this after the 30th minute of play. Gunn has yet to receive a corner kick. Ball kept in nicely, but Got a whistle and ball will be turned over to the Titans. Roughly about two minutes left here in the first half. Heyman's kick blocked. There's Lawrence, but you see they're double teamed. And they're trying to keep the ball away from Heyman. I, I mean, trying to keep the ball away, excuse me, from Lawrence. Got my numbers crossed there. See the respect they have for Janet Lawrence. Another throw in for the Titans. see here how much extra time our official we only have one official for today's game unfortunately he came a little late so we did not get his name and there's a little slip fields in good shape considering it hasn't rained the last week and a half or two weeks and there's a whistle and 
and the ball back to the Eagles as we are closing in at the end of the first half we have two parents on either side of the field one on one side one on the other just calling lines calling whether the ball is in or out by either team and there we have the halftime whistle a goal by Janet Lawrence in the 18th minute of play as giving Gunn a 1-0 halftime lead. Stay with us here on KNVT, bringing you the second half shortly. Gunn 1, Los Altos nothing. You're watching KNVT Channel 15. And now batting for Los Altos number, oh wait, it's not baseball season yet. But work being done on the Los Altos field there. You see the Eagles about ready to start their baseball season coming up in just about a month. But we have business to be taken care of here. Los Altos on the short end of a 1-0 score here. As we have been informed of a change there, we have a new goalie for Los Altos. The freshman, Laura, I mean, Lindsay Perotti is in spelling spelling Lindsay fish so we have one Lindsay replacing another as again I'd like to apologize has some difficult technical difficulties starting off here do not adjust your set we'll try to fix the problem as the game progresses there apologize for our jittery picture Try to get that fixed for you. Mentioned how Los Altos on the short end of a 1-0 score on a windy afternoon here. Gunn scoring in the 18th minute of play on a goal by number 12, Janet Lawrence. Giving Los Altos the one nothing lead. And it so happened on that play that then goalie Lindsey Fish tried to make an aggressive move and slide tackle Lawrence to block the ball, but overplayed the ball and Lawrence had herself an open net and gave Gunn the one nothing lead. So now Lindsay Fish is out and Lindsay Perotti is in. And for those of you, and now oh, we have another overplay and we got a goal by Los Altos. The goal in the second minute of play. Second minute of play of the second half. This is number 10, Tony Chow, the freshman. And Los Altos strikes back, and it is now one to one. One of a turn of events. Mentioned how Lindsey Fish overplayed Janet Lawrence in the first half. Well, now the senior, Laura Boyd for Gunn, overplayed the ball, and Tony Chow had herself an easy goal. Well, what do you know? When we're all tied at one, a new ball game here. Wind kicking up a bit, but now Los Altos with momentum. Mentioned how Los Altos in the first half had many opportunities to tie the game up. They had two balls right in the middle of the net that were blocked away and we had one ball by Jeanette Heyman that went off the, off the uh, sidebar, off the post 
and another one that went off the crossbar just over. Mentioned how Los Altos was due to score with all those opportunities, and they finally did. 42nd minute of play. The freshman tying it up, and we're all knotted at one. Ball bounces off the bleacher there. We'll have a throw in. Mentioned how a win by either team might propel them into the playoffs. There's another crossing shot blocked by Gunn and eventually cleared away. Left foot is shot. Doesn't go anywhere because of the wind. That was by Rebecca Burnham. So Los Altos now all even. 1-1. One, one. And you got to figure the next goal, if another goal is scored here in the second half, might be the golden goal to propel them to the playoffs. But now the biggest thing is that Los Altos, they have momentum on their side now. Didn't take them long right off the bat in the first, in the second half. Scoring the game. Gun now is a little shell-shocked. So they might be vulnerable to another goal here early in the second half. Ball kicked away the back into the Los Altos side, but Los Altos is gaining control at midfield. Down the left corner there. Al Saltos on side and the ball being kicked away by Ashley Tramp. Ball being knocked out of bounds. Annie Fish. And now with that goal, Lindsay Fish is off the hook. She will not. She was on the short end of maybe taking a loss here, but now she is off the hook, and game now is in the hands of Lindsey Perotti, the freshman. And for those of you saying, you know that name Perotti sounds familiar. Well, it should here at Los Altos, but not on the soccer field. Lindsey's older sister, and you gotta, gotta forgive me, I believe her name was Lauren. She was an outstanding gymnast here at Los Altos. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe she is now attending Fresno State. So 1-1 one, one here in the second half. Wind again picking up has been with us throughout the whole game. Sunny skies, but very windy. Good control by the Eagles. Very impressed with their ball control. And their passes have been right on the money. And all their shots on goal and passes on goal have been right in the middle. Not too, not wide, not overplayed. Gunn, since scoring that goal in the 18th minute, has been very defensive. Not many scoring opportunities. Pass down the right side. This is Chow, and ball being kicked away. As we have this opportunity, let's tell you about our website for those of you interested on when this tele game might be telecast or future games. Or if you want information on anything going on at KMVT, just click the www.mvkmvt.org. And we'll try to update you on all the wonderful things happening at Channel 15. So 1-1 one, one is our score, second half. We are in the ninth minute of play. In the second half, and I should add 40 minutes to that, so 49th minute of play. 
80 minutes, of course, in high school soccer. No overtime. So if any one of these teams actually make the playoffs, there will be an overtime. And it looks like uh, the Eagles thought they had the ball, but there's a throw-in for the Titans. But the Eagles quickly regain control. Nice back heel stop by Gunn, but down the right side again. Chasing it is Chow. She tied the game back in the 42nd minute. And Gunn clears again. Another opportunity kicked away by Vicky Chi, the sophomore for Gunn. And I believe this is going to be a corner kick for Los Altos. Already in the fifth. Oh, actually, no, it's a throw in. I thought that was a corner. Heyman, shot, kicked high, headed towards the middle. Shot on goal and just wide. Oh, my. Uh, miss by Ming Dang. Well, I predicted either Dang or Heyman was going to score in this game, and Dang almost came very close. Well, we have this opportunity. Let's take a look at that replay real quick on that goal. And you see the goalie kind of nonchalantly there try to feel the ball as Boyd Misplaying. Misplaying the play. Boy didn't take an aggressive approach to the ball. Slid sideways. Didn't fall forward on the ball. And basically she slid right by it. And no one was covering the right side of the field, which had Chow wide open. And the good thing by the freshman Chow is she didn't rush her kick, saying, oh, I got an open net. Let's let me get it away before something happens. But she, she had enough composure to know that she had no one that close to her, so she just controlled the ball and easily put it right in the middle of the net. So tied it one. And as the cliche goes, ending in a tie is almost like kissing your sister. It could be the kiss of death for either team if this ends in a tie. A tie will do no good to Gunn or Los Altos. As Gunn is a game under 500 in the league and desperately needs the win to finish at 500 and possibly get that at-large berth. And as for Los Altos, they are currently at 500 overall. And it wouldn't help to go a game over. They're currently at 7-7-2. Seven, seven, and two. And a win just might give them enough points to reach the CCS playoffs, which would be a good thing for Los Altos considering they are a young team and any playoff experience they can get will only help them down the line. This time Gunn applying some more pressure. Los Altos quickly clears. Altos. This is their 
last home game of the year, senior day. And mentioned that the two seniors are two of the three tri-captains for this afternoon's game. And earlier, during warm-ups, mentioned how the girls had their special way of having their tri-captain stand out. And after this kick here by Heyman, which goes well over the net, this was the scene earlier during warm-ups as Rebecca Berman, Lucy Daggett, and Ming Deng are the tri-captains. And look at that, wearing pink hats. Oh, you got to love it. And so far, head coach Jack Rosenhan loves what he's seen as his team didn't get discouraged his young team and it's important for a young team with so many opportunities they had scoring in the first half that they didn't score that they didn't get discouraged and Los Altos keeping and applying the pressure has done just that not giving up tied the game early in the first and second half shot towards the middle again and this will go wide of the net gun on the other hand coming into this game with a lot of confidence with a 2-1 win over St. Francis in their last game. Came out strong, but again, since that goal in the 18th minute, Los Altos having gun on their heels. Wind picking up some more. This is Dang in the middle, but kicked away. Saltos quickly, nice job of regaining control right away. Still in the box, will it roll out of bounds? And it does, and this will be a free kick. As Ashley Trant, another freshman, unable to get that. Fifty-sixth minute of play. Each goal coming on an error by the goalies. As both goalies overplaying. A ball and leaving their net wide open. So I guess things do equal out as Los Altos Gave up the easy goal, and so did Gunn. We'll see here now who can capitalize. Got a whistle, a foul, and this will belong to Los Altos. And it'll also be interesting to see in what division, if anyone does win this game, in what division they'll go in. There's a shot. Off the goalie and a shot and a goal! The junior, Ming Dang with the goal, the tri-captain. At the 50, at the end of the 56th minute of play. Los Altos taking the 2-1 lead. Laura Boyd, stunned. Los Altos, ecstatic. And with just a little more than 22 and a half minutes left in the game, Los Altos takes the lead. And here it is on replay. After the free kick, play was on side. Ming Dang getting the rebound off of board. She couldn't recover and Los Altos with the two to one lead. Well, Los Altos with chance after chance after chance. Couldn't come up with that goal in the first half. Now with two balls. Mishandled by Laura Boyd, the senior goalie for Gunn. Oh, 
Nice move around by Rebecca Burnham. Nice play. Shot towards the middle again. This time, Boyd dies for the ball. Boyd's not going to give up another rebound as Boyd is down. Boyd is down, and she might have gotten kicked. We have our official going over. Yeah, and she's pointing, saying she kicked me. Well, let's see if we can pick it up on replay. As check out this move by Burnham. Nice kick to her right, moved around to her left. Good ball control. Kick in the middle, and Boyd dies for the ball, and... I believe that was Bonnie Chen. Bonnie Chen kind of ran into her, but now Bonnie had a lot of momentum going forward. Might have been able to jump over Boyd, but unfortunately, kind of stopped right into her. But Boyd seems to be okay, but a little frustration on her part and Gunn looks a little frustrated as well now they got to press some more ball through the middle of the field but quickly taken up by Perotti well on that second goal by Los Altos it almost reminded me of how goals are scored in ice hockey as you see a lot of pucks after the initial save off the rebound, players score. And Boyd, unfortunately, got a tricky hop. And just bounced off of her. And Ming Dang was right there to put it away. So now Los Altos, down by one, is now up by one as a pooch kick is up and over the net. And that one by Jenna Hillary, Jr. Halfway through the second half. Of course, the official time being kept on the field, so roughly 20 minutes left. And I guess my prediction came true. Well, let's see now if Jeanette Heyman could put one in the back of the net as Dang did her part. See if one of the two seniors, either Berman or Daggett, might be able to get one on senior day here. Ball tipped away and finally kicked away by Perotti. And good job by Perotti of being aware that she was out of the box and didn't try to handle the ball. And this one is shot is kicked away. Good job by the Titan defense. A lot of times you see in soccer that the defender will just kick the ball back to the goalie. But the way balls have been bouncing off of people, don't want to risk it even getting an own goal, which we have have seen one of those this year on KMVT in a game that had the St. Francis boys against Archbishop Mitty. Lancers had a 1-0 lead and gave up an own goal in the, later in the first half. Ended up losing the game. Crossing pass to the right. Gun is there and spoils that offensive threat. Ball kicked out of bounds. That was Monica Quinenez. Couldn't catch up with the ball. Los Altos two, gun one. 63rd minute of play. Now, as we are past the halfway point of the second half, the clock is definitely an enemy of gun. As Los Altos now can apply more pressure. Tighten up on D. Chin shot. Easy roller to Boyd. Actually, that was Dang. Excuse me. Dang's kick was an easy play for Laura Boyd. Here we go, Gun! Come on now! 
This is Lawrence with the ball. And Los Altos better keep an eye on her as she gets a great burst of speed off, off the ball. And Los Altos has to be aware if she gets the ball onside on a fast break. Another shot, but an easy catch by Boyd. Gunn just could tie this game. And here's the bad part for Gunn. And here's a pass for Lawrence. It slips. Oh, possibly would have had a chance on a play, but slipped. So a break for the Eagles. Mentioned the bad break for Gunn is they can't afford a tie. Don't, don't know if a tie can get him into the playoffs. So now they're forced to not, not only worry about tying the game, but they need to win the game. So they need to score two goals roughly in the last 16 or so minutes of the game. Whereas Los Altos can kind of hold, hold back. Free kick for Gunn. Win again, picking up. Let's see if we get a deep kick here. Low liner doesn't get too too far. Left footed shot in the middle, but Perotti is there. Gobbles up the ball. Perotti coming in for Lindsay Fish. Now Perotti has a chance to get the win. Mentioned if either team got a collision. And this is Ming Dang. That went down hard. Seems to be okay. I believe that was. I believe she collided with Magda Kaczynski. Mentioned if either team makes the playoffs. In what division? Which you think either team just might make. Well, Southos probably would go in Division 2. Gun. No, they played in Division 1. You mentioned how Gun only two years ago reached the CCS finals, but ended up losing to St. Francis. Two to nothing. Play up the field now. Two Eagles for the ball. Stolen away. And ball being kept in. Nice job. Left foot is shot to the middle. Crossing pass, but kicked away. This is Lawrence. Double team. Ball pops in the air. Whiffed by a defender. This is Heyman now. Off the Dang. Dang being hounded by Kira Price. And this will be a throw in by Marcy Lassard. And a substitution now for Gunn. See if we can pick up a number and who's coming in. Number, I believe that's number six. And going out number 15, so coming out. Is Lily Robinson. And coming in is Sam Feinberg, Samantha Feinberg. Gun has a large team. The size of numbers bringing over 20 players so they can bring in a lot of fresh legs. Sixty ninth minute of play. Time running short.
Well, the playoffs are going to be an interesting one this year as the seeding meetings, as you're going to be watching this initial telecast on Saturday afternoon. The 10th. And the seeding meetings are actually being taking place right now. So for those of you interested to see if either of these teams or which team makes the playoffs, give you the CCS website. That is www. Actually, I'll give you a second to grab a piece of paper. As you can check the CCS website, basketball playoffs starting the week after. Next week, of course, starting the soccer playoffs the week after the basketball playoffs. As the Los Altos girls basketball team currently in first place in the El Camino. Also, only a game behind them, the Mountain View Spartans. Both teams should make the playoffs. We'll see who wins the league and possible, possibly having a home game as that shot is high and over the net by Tony Chow. Here's that CCS website for you. It's www.cifccs.org. Once again, that's www.cif ccs.org and you can click on and see who makes the playoffs three divisions in girls soccer only two for the boys we already know that St. Francis will be going into division one they are playing Palo Alto at Palo Alto as we speak Vikings have already clinched the Deanta division. But a win over St. Francis would guarantee them only the second undefeated and untied record in league history. St. Francis having the first, of course. Can't remember, but either it was like I believe it was last year. If not, it was the year before. I think it was last year. But the Eagles trying to reach the playoffs. They got a young team. It wasn't too long ago themselves, back in the mid 90s, they were a CCS power. Winning the CCS championship in the mid 90s against the strong presentation Panthers. Speaking of presentation, they might make the playoffs. They'll probably go Division Two. Interesting to see where Midi ends up. They're the defending Division Two champions. They might opt to move up to Division One, possibly. Palo Alto, on the other hand, I believe the last time they made the playoffs was a couple of years ago, and they were in Division Two. They might opt to move to Division One. We also have teams like Cupertino, two years ago CCS champions. There's another opportunity for Los Altos in the middle and a nice diving save by Boyd. We'll give Los Altos a corner kick, but amazing. And here it is on replay. The Eagles not giving up, give them credit. This is Burnham, a double team. And boy, this time positioned correctly and stop the shot. Wind picking up again, liner and hit it out. Well, another goal definitely will give Los Altos the win. That will definitely nail down the win as we are under 
eight minutes left in regulation time. We are in the 74th minute. Do not know how much extra time our official might add. Los Santos now. Don't know if anyone on the far side, on the sideline, is yelling out how much time is left. Probably best that they don't tell any of the girls. Don't want to press up, but I'm sure people on the gun side, they're keeping close eye on the clock. Funny thing, during field hockey season, they bring out a portable electronic clock on the bench side that people can see at least how much time is unofficially left in the game another crossing pass and kicked away but they don't bring it out for soccer and that's same thing happens over at St. Francis as they play field hockey in the same field as they play soccer as they have the baseball scoreboard running, counting down the time, but they don't do it for soccer. Seventy-sixth minute of play. This is a dang shot blocked and kicked away again. Well, even if Los Altos does not make the playoffs this year, but if they can hold on and win, a big positive heading into the off season. Los Altos, if they can hold on to the win, as first we he. You see a double team on Lawrence and a good job by the Los Altos D. Jessica Whalen. Good job by the freshman holding up the senior Janet Lawrence. A win will put Los Altos at an 8-7-2 overall record. Which is a positive with a young team, only two seniors have finished with a 500 record. Time winding down. Unofficially three and a half minutes left in regulation time, not including extra time. Los Altos definitely wants to clear it from their end of the field. Further, further away the ball is from the Los Altos net, the better for them. Well, we don't know the mystery of why our second official never showed up, didn't get a chance to talk to our official on the field at halftime. Now the whole near side of the field on our side is in shade. And definitely much colder. Poot shot over the head of Chow. And Gun now desperately needs to get something going. This is Heyman. Whistle and Los Altos give the ball back to Gunn. Gunn seems to be backpedaling. Los Altos, good job of forcing the ball deeper in the gun zone. This is Heyman. Passing it off to the left. Good job. Didn't rush the pass. Or didn't rush a shot. Knows that it's better to, to run more time off the clock. As here's a pass deep in the Los Altos zone. There's a possible chance for Gunn. And a nice diving stop by Perotti. 
Well, that might have been the best opportunity Gunn has had to probably tie this game up. Great job on, on, the, on the pass here, as we see on replay. Good deep. Look at this. Into the wind. And look how the gun, gun forward just racing through. But Perotti stopping the ball. Stopping, I believe that was... I think that was Jenna Hillary. As we are now in the 79th. Actually, we have we have just entered the 80th minute of play. Just under a minute left in regulation time. Another whistle, Los Altos actually doing a pretty good job of not taking their time. You're thinking, well, why isn't Los Altos, you know, taking a little bit more time on their free kicks or more time on their throw-ins? Well, if the official sees that, it might be interpreted, of course, it's up to the official, but it might be interpreted as a delay of game. Probably might add extra time on the clock. Got a whistle, and this will belong the gun, as we are exactly at 40 minutes, so we are now in extra time. Extra time here. Whistle can be at any second. And ball rolls out, and it'll be a throw in for Gun. Ball Saltos. Seconds away, there's a whistle, but not the final whistle. We got a free kick now for Gun as we have just completed one minute of extra time. We are in the second minute of extra time here in the second half. Al Salto's clean to a 2-1 lead. See there the official looking at his clock, at his watch. And that is it. The final, Los Altos two, gun one. Los Altos on second half goals by Tony Chow and the eventual game winner in the 56th minute by Ming Dang have completed the 2-1 win. Gun's only goal coming in the first half at the 18th minute by Janet Lawrence. Gun now will see their record drop to 4-6 and five in league. Actually, that's a miscount there. Look, that's four, six, and four. Los Altos finishes with a five, seven, and two mark in league, eight, seven, and two overall. And now they will just wait and see if the CCS will allow them to come into the playoffs. But a two-one win for the Eagles. There you see Jack Rosenhan shaking hands with Owen Flannery. Gunn most likely will not make the playoffs, but Los Altos, well, you never know. But a good way to end the season. And, and that will do it for us here for KNVT. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Your final score, Los Altos 2, Gunn 1. Thanks for watching KMVT Channel 15. I'm Lazarus Sarginides. Hope you enjoyed this afternoon's contest. And we'll see you next time.